Are you thinking of retiring? If you are, you might be wondering, when is the best time in the year to actually retire, actually finish work? Well, we believe for most people, it's gonna be retiring at the end of the tax year. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you five reasons why we believe that is the case. I'm Carl Roberts, Chartered Financial Planner at RTS Financial Planning. So before we dive into the five reasons why we think it's best to retire at the end of the tax year, I just wanna be clear on what the tax year is. So in the UK, the tax year runs from the 6th of April to the 5th of April the following year. So that's the UK tax year. So let's dive into the five reasons why we think it's best to retire around March, you know, the end of the UK tax year. So reason number one, you could pay a lower rate of income tax. So if you're a higher rate taxpayer especially, and you retire partway through the tax year, obviously you're gonna have a number of months worth of salary that you've already received. If you then decide to take your pension income on retirement partway through the year, your pension income is gonna be added on top of the salary you've already received for that year, which could mean your pension income starts to be taxed at 20% or 40% or even 45%, depending on how high your salary has been. So if you delay your retirement to the end of the tax year, you're going to be starting a new tax year where any pension income that gets paid out is going to be taxed at a much lower rate because it's not going to be added on to salary because you wouldn't have had any salary if you start a new tax year. So reason number two, following on from the first reason, you get a full personal allowance if you retire at the end of the tax year. You're going to start the new tax year without any other income, so you're going to get your full personal allowance. Everyone's entitled to around £12,500 a year of personal allowance, which means they can earn that much money before paying any income tax. So your pension income will form part of this personal allowance. So you could take up to £12,500 of pension income and not pay any income tax on it. Reason number three, ISA allowance. So if you've not used your ISA allowance and you retire towards the end of the tax year, you could put £20,000 into an ISA. And then within a few days, once we start the new tax year, you could put a further £20,000 into an ISA because you'll get your new ISA allowance for the start of the tax year. So this could be really handy for people that get bonuses on retirement or they get a lump sum paid out from their pension and they're looking for where to invest it. Because remember, ISAs grow tax-free and any withdrawals from ISAs in the future are completely tax-free. Better still, if you have a spouse, your spouse can also do the same thing with their ISA allowances. So £20,000 for the end of the tax year, and then after a few days, another £20,000 for the start of the new tax year. So in a very short space of time, if you're a couple, you could end up with £80,000 in tax-free ISAs. Okay, reason number four. Similar to the ISA allowance, you've also got your capital gains tax allowance. So everyone's entitled to £12,300 worth of capital gains tax allowances every tax year. And this could be really handy if you're thinking of selling down investments or property investments that have made large gains and you're going to use that money to sort of fund your retirement. If, that's made, if your investments and property have made gains, there's a chance you might pay capital gains tax. So you need to use your capital gains tax allowance against this to offset some of that tax. So if you've not used it and you retire at the end of the tax year, you could do £12,300 worth of capital gains tax allowance to offset some of your gains. But also, again, you could make another sale just moving into the new tax year where you'll get another capital gains tax allowance of £12,300. Meaning, you know, in a short space of time, you've got £24,600 worth of capital gains tax allowances. And of course, if you have your spouse, you could use their capital gains tax allowances as well, meaning a total of £49,200 worth of gains could be wiped out in a very short space of time by retiring at the end of the tax year. So finally, reason number five is all about using the gift allowance. So if you're someone that always had the idea of gifting money to your family once you retired, so perhaps out of your pension lump sum or some of the other investments that you're selling down, well, everyone's entitled to gift away up to £3,000 every tax year without any tax implications. And if you've not used your gift allowance 
from the previous tax year, you can carry that forward, meaning in one tax year you could give away up to £6,000. Now, of course, if we're at the end of the tax year, you could be giving away £6,000, but then we're going to go into a new tax year, where you'll get another £3,000 worth of gift allowance. So that means you can gift away £9,000 in the space of a few days. And you probably guessed it, if you have a spouse, you can use their gift allowance as well. So again, they could possibly have the £9,000 as well to gift away, meaning a total of £18,000 could be gifted on your retirement um, within a short space of days. So that's five reasons why we believe you know, around end of March, start of April is the best time to retire for most people. But there's a bonus to retiring around this time. And that's because you'll be going into spring. So the weather's going to be nicer, the night's going to be longer, and there's going to be more you can do as you start your retirement. But of course, it's not for everyone. So there will be reasons why it's probably not appropriate or it might not be appropriate to retire at the end of the tax year. And there's things you need to check. So particularly if, if you work for a company you know, that pays bonuses, you have a healthcare scheme um, or a car scheme, you need to check how your retirement Im impacts on these schemes. So do you need to work a certain period to get your full bonus? Is it worth staying on um, perhaps past the end of the tax year to get a full year's worth of bonus? Same with your healthcare and car schemes. Are there any penalties if you retire at a certain point in time? That needs to be checked. Also, if you're a member of a defined benefit pension scheme, usually you accrue years based on your know, calendar membership. So if you joined the scheme partly through a tax year, you might have to wait to the end of that particular year to get your full pension benefit from that. So again, worth checking on that. And of course, if you, know, you hate your job, you're stressed, it's causing you ill health, there's never that's never a good reason to delay your retirement. You, know, you shouldn't be thinking about dates at that point. You know, if you're suffering, you hate your job, you've got the resources and your objective is to retire, then you know, look at going as soon as possible. So I hope you found this video useful. If you do want to explore your retirement and check your position in more detail, come and have a chat with us. We offer a free no obligation um, call where you know, you'll talk to a chartered financial planner such as myself and we can go through your situation and see what's right for you. Until next time, take care.